this has probably been way too much justification. I mean, that's basically what we could call my channel these days, right? Rosie justifies too much. Rosie rambles and then says she can ramble because it's her channel. Everyone, Rosie here, welcome or welcome back to my channel, and welcome to another reading vlog. I am about to start reading Homegoing by Ya Giasi? Giasi? I should have looked this up before filming. I'm about to start reading Homegoing and I am so excited and I've heard such great things that I thought this would be a really fun book to do a reading vlog for. I don't know too much about it from the outset other than the fact that it's apparently amazing. Basically all I know about the plot or the content is that it's about... 10 generations of a family dating back to two half-sisters in Ghana and I think sort of where their descendants end up and what happens to them type thing. Sounds amazing. It's supposedly fantastic. I know Brittany from Literarily Smitten absolutely adores this book. It's one of her absolute faves. She can't stop saying amazing things about it and she has amazing taste. So that has me pretty hyped. Also, I'm pretty sure several other booktubers I follow have said wonderful things about this book. Hopefully it'll be great. Let's dive right in and I'll let you know how I'm getting on with it. I'm three chapters in now out of 14, so like already almost a quarter of the way through the book, and I think it's going to be incredible. I think I'm going to love it. And I also think that this is going to be so incredibly hard to read. Not from like the words on the page sense, but just from the content in it. So it starts in the 1700s on the Gold Coast in Africa, which was a hub of the slave trade. And yeah, the slave trade is a major component so far, and I assume is going to continue to be for at least the next many chapters, and the influences of it will probably continue to be felt throughout the rest of the book. So not easy reading material. I do think it's really interesting, though. It is incredible, just difficult. Each chapter follows a different individual and we alternate. So the first two chapters are the two half-sisters and then the next chapter was the son of one of the sisters and I assume after that it's going to go to someone on the other family tree and then work our way down like that and we're seeing how these various groups and the various people and the families are unknowingly interlinked I think. And I assume they'll continue to knowingly or unknowingly encounter their relations and fellow descendants throughout the book. It's definitely going to be one to read in sections though. Like, I've read three chapters and even if I didn't have other things to do right now, I'd want to put it down and read something else and not try and read it all at once. I think that would be way too much. Wow, I've read another four chapters. I think I'm seven chapters in and about halfway through the book and it continues continues to be incredible. I have to refer to the like family tree at the beginning sometimes to keep track of what generation I'm on, but I'm just so blown away by this writing. The way she handles these topics is incredible. I hadn't thought about this before I started reading, and it's only really sunk in today as I was going through, but this format of switching between people and through time is such an incredible way to tell a story that is so interwoven with something as huge and far-reaching as slavery and the slave trade, because we're seeing it from so many perspectives. All black, but not just one side or one story. We're getting so many different experiences with it, and I think that's done incredibly well. But I also like that it's not just about that. It's almost more that forms the backdrop and is a major component in the story, but the human element and the interpersonal elements are just as big in this book, and I'm just amazed at how well she has balanced those. I'm so incredibly blown away by this book. Again, why am I surprised by these things? Everyone loves a book and then I read it and I'm surprised that it's amazing. I really need to get better at actually listening to what people say, clearly. Much as this is incredible, I think I'm gonna read something else for now because what I said last time about it being quite heavy and not wanting to binge read it all the way through still stands. I think I want to pause for a little while, let it sink in, 
think about it and come back tomorrow so I can really fully absorb what's being said and what's being written. It's actually Friday morning now so as you can tell it's been a little while since I picked this book up and I'm getting through it a lot slower than I expected not because it's slow to read not because it's bad or I'm not enjoying it I'm really really liking it but it's a book where I feel like I need to be able to give it some attention it's not one I can just pick up, read for five or ten minutes, or read for 15 minutes as I'm falling asleep. It's a book where I feel like I really want to sit down and read at least one full chapter, which is usually 25 minutes, and often two chapters. So I'm sort of not reaching for it in the evenings, because by the time I've been getting to reading this week, I've been tired and I'm like, I'm gonna fall asleep soon. I can't properly appreciate this right now. I did just read another two chapters this morning, though. I woke up and I was like, I'm gonna be good this morning. I'm not going to scroll through my my phone for an hour before getting out of bed. I'll read for an hour. It's so good. Oh my goodness, the writing in this is amazing. Something I've noticed is that it's unlike other multi-generational stories that I've read before because we don't see the same character traits or physical traits showing up time after time. We see things pop up, of course. These are descendants. But I've read some before where it felt like these are the same people just in different times. And this one, each character, despite only having a chapter, feels entirely like their own person. Just like, I am my own person, I am not a replica of my parents. That's something I feel like has been done absolutely beautifully in this book. It's been slow going this weekend. I honestly just haven't had the mental energy to give to this book. Not in that it's a hard read, but just in because it is such a beautiful and impactful and incredibly thought out book. I didn't want to read it when I didn't have the appropriate energy to give it, and I felt like I wouldn't be able to properly appreciate it, if that makes sense. So I waited until Sunday afternoon to finish reading it, because it's just been a weekend. And I'm so glad I did. I read the last five chapters of it this afternoon, and it was so, so incredible. I'm just so incredibly blown away by how every single chapter... I feel like we fully inhabit the character, and I feel like every character is so incredibly well-rooted in their time. I'm gonna be so repetitive, but it really is so incredible. Especially where in the later chapters we often see characters from different chapters interacting, like we'll see a mother and then a son, and then the grandson. So we see all of these characters from these different perspectives, and each one makes total sense. And you'll be seeing a conversation between, say, a mother and a son, and you 100% are feeling what both sides are feeling. I mean, it's one thing to make it so that the reader can feel like they're empathizing with the protagonist, but to be emphasizing but to be empathizing with both the protagonist and the person they're currently arguing with or currently at odds with, and to understand how both of them are right based on their view of the world incredible. I know I've said it a million times, but seriously, this book is just so fantastic. I have no idea if this has been a proper review of this book or not. It blew me away so much that I almost don't know how to review it at all because I have so many thoughts swirling around in my head. Some people would argue that this is the point of taking some time to reflect and write up a review with notes before you review a book. I would argue that this isn't a review video. I mean, yes, I know it says review on the title and thumbnail, but it's a reading vlog and review, so I'm giving you my vlog style thoughts. This angle is really hard to hold, so sorry if the angle has just switched like three times in one shot. It's now uh, early evening on Sunday. This book has blown me away. A past self might have gone into a reading hangover and been like, I can't read anything because that was just so good and I need to process it, but I'm too much of a book addict these days, so I'm gonna go read something else and eat some yummy chocolate chip cookies I made earlier and uh, get lost in the next book. Let me know down below, have you read this book? I imagine a number of you have because I've seen so many people speak so highly of it, and rightfully so, it was incredible. If you haven't read it, is it one you're interested in reading? I don't know, let's talk in the comments. Talk about this book, talk about other books, talk about chocolate chip cookies. I'm down for it all. As always, if you like this video, please hit the like button down below. If you'd like to see more of my videos, please hit subscribe, and thank you for watching.